Uh, day seven notes is something called completing the square. So um, completing the square, as, as you might kind of um, surmise, has to do, visually, has to do with make, making a square geometrically. It literally, um, we are physically going to make a square uh, polynomial. Um, but also, so that's geometrically, right? Um, we also, though, have a, an algebraic um, application for a perfect square. Um, so a perfect square algebraically are those numbers like 1 and 4 and 9 and 16, right? <clears throat> it's when you take a number times itself and it's that, it's that, uh, that product, 25, etc. So um, we're kind of looking at both of those uh, applications. Um, before we do that, let's just kind of sharpen our solving skills when we talk about having squares in expressions. Like when we look at this first expression, uh, x squared equals 64. Uh, both of those are perfect squares. So um, we have these uh, square square expressions and um, we know that to solve then involves um, undoing that square expression so we end up square rooting each side and then we um, we we know when we take a square root of a perfect square we get out what's underneath and then um, the square, 64 is a perfect square, and its square root is 8. And then we know we have a plus or a minus option here um, because we know that uh, 8 times 8 is 64, but so is minus 8 times minus 8, right? A number times itself. So that's why there are two answers here. Oops. Two answers and you would expect two answers right because it's a quadratic we know quadratics have two answers okay next strategy here we need to isolate that square term so we're gonna we're working on isolating um, which means we need to divide by 4 that would isolate the x squared on the left and then 196 divided by 4 is oh, let's see 4 goes in the 19 4 times with the three left over, 36, 49. And we also recognize 49 as a perfect square. So this solution is x equals plus or minus 7. Um, and then we can even do this with expressions um, as long as we can isolate the square, which in part C, the square is isolated. Um, we have a group that is squared. And so we can undo that power by square rooting the group, which means we just have the, uh, the single expression. And then when we square root this, we get plus or minus 5. And, and again, it, it sparks two solutions. We have x plus 2 equals a positive 5, and x plus 2 equals a negative 5. And so our two solutions then are, are found by subtracting 2. And so we have x equals 3, and subtracting 2 over here gets us x equals 7 for our two answers there. Okay, so, um, so that's rel relatively uh, a quick strategy as long as we can isolate the square. And so can we, in, in this form that we have in number 2, can we square root? That's what it's asking. So we have that um, expression now. Um, can we use that same strategy of just square rooting? And the answer is no, we can't, because it's not written as either a single term squared or a expression squared. So what this brings into um, consideration is that can we take this quadratic statement 
can we take this and rewrite it? In other words, factor it. And when we factor it, does it look like 1c? Will it look like a perfect square trinomial? Okay. So let's take a look at this. Let's factor x squared. So we know, um, if we, going back to that area model, this is x squared. This is 144. So this, we, we know these end up being x. And then we need plus 24x. So um, if we, we know a perfect square has to have the same digits in each bracket. So if we put 12 and 12 here, then we add those together, right? Those are the x terms. We add those together to get 24, and we multiply the 12s together to get 144. So this ends up being x plus 12 times x plus 12. That's how we would write it right, when we factor it. But that is also x plus 12 quantity squared. That's why we call it that perfect square trinomial. And so since we can write it as a perfect square trinomial, then we can use that strategy above um, where we have the power isolated. And since we have the power isolated, we can come in here and square root both sides. And that gets us x plus 12 equals plus or minus 9. And then um, we can solve for both of those conditions. What happens when x plus 12 is a, equals a positive 9? And what happens when x plus 12 equals a negative 9? So we're going to move the 12 over, and we get x equals negative 3. And likewise, we're going to do the same to the other condition, and we get x equals negative 21. So those are our two solutions. So if we can get the expression to be a perfect square trinomial, then, um, then we're good to go. We can use that strategy above. Okay? So um, if we take a look at number three, Um, it says, let's, let's try, uh, let's change colors here. Let's try this. 7 equals x squared plus 6x. Okay, fill in the diagram with the x squared and the x terms as if the factors were the same. So um, we'd have x squared, and we have to make 6x, and the, they have to be the same. So this has to be 3x plus 3x. Well, if that's the case, then this has to be 9. So as it is, if we look at this expression, right, um, or maybe specifically this expression, because it's that expression that pertains to the model, we're missing the 9. Well, we can, we can deal with that, right? We can, we can look at um, this expression, and then we can go ahead and I think maybe I'm going to get this out of here and make it a different color. We can go ahead and add the 9 so that it's a perfect square trinomial. Uh, but if we add the 9 to the right-hand side of this equation, we need to add the 9 to the left-hand side of the equation. So it looks like that. So now we have things looking pretty good, right? We got 16, and then we have x plus 3 quantity squared, right? And I'm getting the x plus 3 quantity squared from oh, my model. And then I can go ahead and, um, and solve that. So um, 16 equals x plus 3 quantity squared. You know, in retrospect, maybe um, a good intermediate step would be to write it like this, right? Like we would factor, um, like we would use that box to factor, that area model to factor a, a trinomial that we made. Um, and then we can go ahead and square root both sides. And this gets us plus or minus 4, and this gets us x plus 3. And so we can go ahead and solve for our two conditions. x plus 3 equals a positive 4, and x plus 3 equals a negative 4. And then we can go ahead and move the 3. So we get x equals 1, and likewise move the 3 on this condition, 
and we get x equals negative 7. So now we have a process. Um, and the process is that uh, we're looking at an expression and really, no matter what expression we look at, um, we want to collect our x squared and our x terms um, on, on one side so that we can build this perfect square. Right, so there's my x squared, there's my minus 14x, so I know I have an x and a minus 7 and an x and a <clears throat> minus 7. And uh, now I can do my multiplication here. This is a plus 49. So I know that what I do is if I can take this right-hand side and add 49 to it, then I have a perfect square trinomial. And so that's an easy fix because if I have 15 on the other side, then I can just go ahead and add 49 to that as well. Um, just to keep the equality valid. And then I can go ahead and use that strategy. The left side is 64. The right side is x minus 7 quantity squared. And I can use that strategy we began the notes with. Square root both sides, get plus or minus 8, get x minus 7. And then my two situations, x minus 7 equals a positive 8, x minus 7 equals a negative 8. And then go ahead and solve for the two possible situations. So I get x equals 15 and x equals minus 1. So our learning targets then are this. <clears throat> we need to complete that square, which is why the title is what it is, right? The title of 6, 7 is completing the square. So we need to, and visually, that's exactly what we're doing. So learning target one, there is only one learning target, and it's called the, it's, it's the process for completing, uh, completing the square. And um, so the, the first step then is, um, isolate the x squared and the x. So get x squared and x by themselves. Okay. So that it looks like x, x squared plus x. In fact, maybe I'll go bx, right? Because we have a, oops, let me do a x squared plus bx plus c, right? Um, and so we're, we're going to complete the square so that we get a x squared plus bx equals basically minus c, the opposite of c. And then um, we can complete area square. How about area diagram? Complete area diagram. There we go. Um, to have both factors the same, right? If we have a factor times itself, that makes a perfect square. And then add missing value from diagram. So like add the 49 or the, uh, um, what was the one before that? The 9, add the missing value from the diagram to both sides of equation. And then we're going to write it as a perfect square. And we're going to use that solving technique. 
for two answers. Okay, so as you're working and check your understanding, you can go ahead and um, and work out these solutions. So just a quick preview. This is how I would approach this one. I would go minus 16 plus box equals x squared minus 10x plus box, right? And that number is going to come from right here, right? That's going to complete the square. Um, on this one, I would add the 63 to both sides first. So I have 63 equals, and then I would scoochie the equal sign over so I can do plus box, equals x squared plus 2x plus box. And that box, again, is what's going to complete the square there. So that's kind of how I would approach those. This one, you're going to need to move the 5 over there and combine it with the 10. So work on those to check your understanding. You can check them against the notes and Blackboard, and then you've got some homework.